How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Bear Reviews. Back for yet another review. A little bit of crowler time. A little bit of little beer crowler time in the form of Wallen Pop Back Brewing's Paw Pack Pills. Um, yeah, Wallen Pop Back Brewing. I actually did one of their beers, reviewed it about mm, maybe a couple months ago. Right before they opened, I was actually... Uh, went up there, kind of hung out with the brewer and the brewers and the owners, and kind of just shot the shit. I ended up recording a lot of like footage and stuff. I was gonna edit and put together, but um, alas, I lost it like a dum dum that I am, and uh, kind of just uh, put up a review of their lager, which I really dug. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get up there uh, since then. A lot of stuff's gone on. My dog passing, random things, but I uh, had the ability to get up there today, and uh, yeah, had to bring some a little bit of good stuff back. To review and uh decided to do the pills i have another one too but decided to do the pills because uh yeah who doesn't love a good pills now so let's uh see what you got on the crowler here it just says pop pack pills there five percent alcohol by the volume today is 12 16 so it was crowler today holy pennsylvania and that'd be that they got you know untapped information all that kind of stuff on there little wise i dig it it's basically the silhouette of lake wall pop pack for those that don't know lake wall pop packs very kind of um, touristy area up there in kind of northeastern Pennsylvania, up by the New York, New Jersey kind of border, Port Jervis area. Um, but I think the logo, the Crowler's cool. They actually had a newer Crowler machine there. Um, not like the old Oscar Blue style one, one of the um, newer ones. I think it's the patent might have run up now, and other people are actually starting to produce them. So, yeah. It's kind of interesting to see that. So, so yeah, one up there. I had this while I was up there, so I'm not going to tell you I haven't had it yet. Um, but give that a big, hard pour into a very tall, kind of, what I like to call my kind of Pilsner glass. Big cascading bubbles coming down. Um, you know, I would give it a better pour, but honestly, it's a crowler. It's hard to kind of pour beer into those sons of bitches. So, anyway, this is what you get when this guy kind of throws beers in the glasses. Um, you know, gigantic head, no fault of theirs, it's a fault of mine, size of the glass, like I said, crowler, and there's a soft kind of, um, soft, soft, soft carbonation, nothing too crazy, a little bit of glass bubble sticking, dirty glass mafia style stuff, which is a bunch of malarkey, because I just cleaned this glass, and I cleaned it before I cleaned it, so, I don't know, my water here must suck, because my glass game is off, um, soft carbonation, light, very light, subtle haziness, and a very kind of... Uh, washed out straw kind of color. It's a Pilsner look to a T, let's put it that way. So yeah, it's got a really nice kind of frothy, creamy head to it on it that looks like it's going to leave some pretty epic lacing on there and microscopic kind of bubbles to like medium bubbles from the bottom to the top. So yeah. Anyway, let's see if we can get a nose on this sucker. Probably snorting a little foam on this one. I'm getting like a soft Pilsner malt to it. A soft, uh, malty Pilsner-ness uh, to it. Nothing too crazy, nothing too over the top. There's a soft, soft kind of old school hoppy, bittering European hoppy, kind of, you know, your Zazi kind of Czech style kind of Pilsner-y kind of nose to it. So yeah, soft bittering. Nice kind of Pilsner malt to it. Nice sweetness. A little bit of bitter bittering to kind of balance off that sweetness. That's pretty much it. I mean, this is a big head, so it's kind of hard to get a proper nose on that sucker but she's starting to sell that and look pretty damn pretty if i don't say so myself so yeah let's just get to the good part give her a taste cheers that's tasty that's a tasty freaking beer right there um it's definitely hopped a little bit more aggressively than i'm used to when it comes to kind of traditional style pilsners but that tends to be a little bit more of an American kind of thing when it comes to these kind of European Czech style pilsners. Um, it, it's got a nice bittering to it. There's a sweetness to it, but a bittering portion of the show is definitely the kind of calling card of the beer itself. Um, but there's not enough to kind of throw it off balance. It's just more bittering than kind of balanced, I should say. A nice sweetness to it. It's a little bit, again, everything's a little bit kind of dialed up. It's the hair dialed up from it, from its kind of European brethren. Um, but again, bittering wins the day here. Nice sweetness to it. Super chuggability. Super clean. Super crisp. Um, it just kind of sets itself apart from a kind of a base kind of standard Pilsner. 
And that with that little bit of sweetness being a touch, touch, and I'm talking microns here, touch sweeter, and that bittering being a bit more than what I typically used to, it just kind of adds a little bit of oomph to a beer style that is typically more in kind of a chuggerville than a kind of kind of sitting wax poetic kind of stuff when it comes to a pilsner. Um, pilsners are, you know, what people have drank for years. Uh, it's kind of the brewer's choice when it comes to beers that they typically drink. Um, it's something, you know, you can drink like 30 of them a night if you chose to. Um, but I've always been curious if this is more kind of on the nose of what a Pilsner would be like if I drank it straight from the source, whether I went to, you know, overseas in Europe and someplace. I haven't been over there, unfortunately, so I don't know. But by the time they get over here and travel and things like that, yeah, you know, I've always been curious. So I'm going to have to kind of, kind of, uh, fix that one day and actually take a trip over and see what's what but yeah uh, back to this beer in general it's super clean super refreshing but enough kind of impact from both the malt and the hot presence to kind of uh, set itself apart from the haves and the haves nots so let's talk about it it's one of the better pilsners i've had as of late actually yeah um, you know what I mean? It's not that I've drank a ton of them, but I've kind of had my fair share. There's some that I, I've dug, like your, um, I believe it was, uh, you know, Vletton's Pilsner. Um, that was nice, a little bit more malty and stuff like that. So you can kind of get a little bit of variance on your beers here and there. But, uh, yeah, this is probably one of the more chuggable ones I've had as of late. One of the more cleaner beers. And that's one of the things that kind of, well, in Paul Beck Brewing, the stuff that I've had from the couple times that I've been there, really kind of just hangs their hat on. Um, the, the brewer CG up there comes from that kind of old school brewing, um, what's the word they call it? A tree, I guess you would say, of brewers. You know, he worked at Fegley's, which is a very kind of old school style brewery. He worked at Trogues for a while, now there. So he brings that kind of super kind of old school, tight as tight could be kind of brewing style. They're a brewery that is trying to do a little bit different stuff. They have, you know, they have a fooder up there. They have some barrel age program stuff going on, so they're not resting on their laurels. But when it comes to it, I think when you're talking about a new brewery that's doing stuff on a much larger scale, the fact that these small bar beers are so clean and crisp, that's pretty damn fantastic. Um, let's see. Valued availability. I think the crowd was like 8 to 10 bucks. Uh, that's not too bad for a nice chuggable Pilsner. Brewery only at this point. I know they're going to be doing cans. They're going to be doing distribution in the future. But they're not doing it at this moment. And uh, just leave you with, if you like what we like this. If you just like clean, crisp, chuggable beers. If you're a fan of Pilsners. And you're a fan of good beer made good by good people. Uh, like I said, um, you know, CJ and uh, ownership there have their head on straight. They're doing things pretty pretty, uh, pretty awesome there as far as how they have stuff laid out and ideas they have going forward with beer. So um, just to see people kind of doing stuff with, uh, you know, just a good heart or a good direction or a good moral compass, I guess you would say, is pretty awesome stuff. And it's not that far. Uh, it's kind of weird because it's like Lake Wall and Paul Pack, where the hell is that? You know, it's, you know, from the Delaware Water Gap, it's about a half an hour, 40 minutes. You know what I mean? From New York City, it's about an hour or so. From up in that Orange County area where you see your equilibriums of rushing ducks, it's, you know, probably about 20, 30 minutes away from there. From Scranton, northeastern Pennsylvania, it's about 30, 40 minutes. So it's kind of in a little bit of not directly easily hittable, but at the same time, um, easily gotten to if you really want to take a little trip out there and there's a couple other breweries around the area so if you're ever looking to make a little brewery trip something new that area is uh kind of starting to bust with a couple of fun fun breweries so there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed the review uh, if you did didn't anywhere in between uh down there words and stuff and things um if you want to check me out anywhere else on the internet you can facebook twitter instagram untapped massive beers all four of those places and uh yeah another review down so hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully you're enjoying a nice Fresh, well done Pilsner right now, and hope to see you next time. Cheers.